All right, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's rules, uh, the loop rule and the junction rule, uh, and apply that to some, some problem solving with circuits. Uh, and we'll also talk about combining resistors in series and in parallel. So those are the two main, main topics. Um, Kirchhoff's rules, uh, and in particular, the loop rule, really help us solve for currents in a circuit. Um, so the, the basic idea is here is that uh, no matter what circuit elements you have, you could have a whole bunch of resistor, capacitor, whatever, a whole bunch of things. Um, maybe we'll hold off on the capacitors. The idea is that you have a circuit, and maybe you have some idea of uh, the current going around the circuit. So here, actually, uh, it, it would actually depend on the EMFs of these two batteries for which way the current would actually go around. But say, suppose you have a guess for the, the uh, Current direction. So let's guess that it's that this EMF is bigger if we didn't know right away, uh, which would tend to drive current around that way. So you have some direction that if so, if I is positive, that means that the current is actually going in that direction. If if we solve an equation and we get that I is negative, that means we chose the wrong direction. But that's okay. That just means that the current would actually be going counterclockwise in this circuit with whatever value we get. So the idea here is that we have some picture and some current direction, and then separate from the current direction we're going to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. So separate from that current direction, and just to emphasize this, I'm gonna go uh, the opposite way with, with the, the loop here. So I'm gonna go this way around the circuit. And so what we're doing here is we're just, uh, we're gonna start and end on this point. Uh, we're gonna go around the circuit and take into account voltage changes as we go across uh, circuit elements. So a couple that you definitely need to be familiar with are uh, voltages across resistors and batteries. So just for definiteness, let's label this E1 and E2, and let's label this R1 and R2, and keep track of voltage changes. So the rules for the voltage changes are given in this table. So this direction of travel is like the blue right here. So we're, we're going to jump across R1 from the right to the left, right? Opposite the direction of the current. So we could go with the direction of the current or opposite the direction of the current. And the delta V matters uh, one way or the other. Uh, and same with jumping across the battery. Like, are you jumping from the positive terminal to the negative terminal or from the negative to the positive? So batteries are the easiest things to keep track of. Uh, if, you're, if you're jumping from the negative uh, terminal to the positive terminal across the battery, then you're increasing in potential difference. Right, so uh, so whatever the EMF is of the battery, you just add that that value. Um, if you're jumping from the negative to the positive, however, if you're jumping from the uh, positive to the negative, and that's the second example right here, then that's a drop in electric potential uh, equal to the EMF of the battery. So the change across the battery in that direction will be minus E, where E is the EMF of the battery. Okay. Um, across a resistor. Um, if you're traveling in the same direction as the current, so see how the current is going to the right in this uh, picture. And if we also are jumping from here to here, start and end, we're jumping to the right across this thing in the same direction as the current, then that's a voltage drop. Uh, and the reason for that is that, uh, so this, in order for current to be going to the right in the first place, that only happens if the left side of that resistor is at higher potential than the right hand side. So if I is positive, in that picture, then that's a potential drop as we go to the right across that resistor. And if we're traveling in the direction opposite the current, we have a voltage gain across the back, uh, across the sorry resistor. Uh, so that's how we keep track of voltages across batteries and, and resistors. And you could probably guess what it is for capacitors. If the, if the positive play of the capacitor is here and the negative play is here, then if we were to jump, say, from the left to the right, that would be a voltage drop. That would be a, a minus delta V for, the, for jumping across that capacitor. Uh, okay, so let's apply the, these rules to uh, this example right here. So we're going to, like I said before, we're going to start and end on that corner. So when we add up all the delta Vs, we get zero from the Kirchhoff's loop rule. Um, but let's actually keep track of all these. Okay, so there's only one current going around in this circuit, right? There's no junctions, there's no, there's no places for the current to branch off. So the current is everywhere exactly the same value. It's not used up by a resistor. It's any, any charges that are moving are moving everywhere all at the same time, all around the circuit. So I is the same everywhere on the circuit. As we jump across R1, so going uh, across R1 against the current, 
if we're traveling against the current, then we get a voltage gain across the resistor. So that would be a plus I times R1. Now we're going to jump across the battery uh, from here to here, and that's a voltage drop, uh, E minus E1. Uh, and then we're going to gain voltage across the second battery. So this would be a plus E2 across that one. And then it looks like we're going against the current again, going from R2, you know, jumping across R2. So we're jumping up across R2, which is the direction opposite the current, which is going down, you know, just continuing this. Current's going this way. So if we're going against the current, that's a, another voltage gain. That's a plus I times R2 equals zero. So this is just a reflection of the sum of the voltage changes across, across each of the circuit elements gives you zero as you go all the way around uh, the loop of the circuit. So this is the formula that would help us solve for the current. If we knew the EMFs of the two batteries and the resistances of the two resistors, then we would only have one unknown, the current I, that we could solve for. And the sign of I is totally determined by uh, which one is bigger, E1 or E2. So if E1 is bigger than E2, um, looks like we would get a positive value for I. But if E2 is bigger than E1, we would get a negative value of I, which means the current is actually going uh, counterclockwise in this circuit. OK, so, um, so Kirchhoff's rules can, you know, can be applied to basic circuits, too. Uh, so the first examples here are just, you know, this is, this is saying E is equal to IR or E minus IR is equal to zero, you know, you eventually get to this formula or the current is equal to E over R, which we sort of already know because this side of the resistor is at the positive terminal of the battery, this side's at the negative terminal of the battery. So the voltage across the resistor is equal to the EMF of the battery. Um, and we know from Ohm's law that V equals IR for that. Uh, so the, the voltage across the resistor would be equal to IR. Um, but yeah, just a, just a consequence of, of, uh, of Kirchhoff's rules. And the current would be going down through here. Um, so two batteries, two resistors. This is a very similar example that the textbook is doing as what I did. And they're actually doing an example where they chose the wrong direction for the current. I'm just showing you how to interpret that. So it just means that they chose the wrong direction, that the current is actually going the other way around in this circuit. But it doesn't invalidate the algebra. Like, Everything is still correct. It's just that a negative current means the current is actually going opposite the way that you uh, you maybe initially thought. Okay, we talked about uh, energy and power in the last video. Um, so we'll do a more complicated example of Kirchhoff's rules uh, when we do the example here. But uh, let's talk about combinations of resistors first. Um, so we talked about com combinations of capacitors. And we saw there that when we had two capacitors in parallel, that was the easy formula, right? That was the C equivalent is C1 plus C2. So if, you, if the goal is to make as big a capacitor, a capacitance as possible, you should connect capacitors in parallel. Um, resistors follow very similar formulas. If we're combining two resistors and we want to know the resistance, the equivalent resistance across the two resistors, um, there are two very similar formulas, except they're almost swapped from the, from the capacitor case. Um, so for capacitors, two in parallel was the easy formula. For resistors, two in series will be the, the uh, easy formula. Uh, so in other words, uh, if you have, so these two resistors are connected in series. Notice how it, uh, following along one branch, you know, one wire, you hit, hit one resistor and it the wire doesn't branch off or anything, you definitely hit the second resistor. Whatever current is going through one of them is definitely going through the other one as well. Um, for those cases, the equivalent resistance is R1 plus R2. Right? The current through this resistor is equal to the current through this resistor, and it's equal to the current that's going through the equivalent resistance. So the currents are all the same, I1. So for series, we have R1 plus R2 is R equivalent. We have that all of the currents are the same. I1 equals I2 equals I equivalent. But the voltage drops add, right? If we look at the original circuit, we go from A to this point, to some middle point, M. And then we go M to B. And it looks like as we go from A to M and M to B, we drop in voltage some amount, right? Because we're going along the direction of the current. So remember from Kirchhoff's loop rule, or from Kirchhoff's rules, the way we keep track of voltages. 
is that if we're going in the same direction as the current, we're dropping in voltage. So we drop some amount, drop some more amount. So the total drop from A to B is the sum of those two. Um, so it, you know, if we're being careful about signs here, the delta V, if we're going from left to right, they're actually negative. Um, but a lot of times when we just write V, we're just talking about the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor, or sorry, across the resistor. Uh, so V1 plus V2, we probably have a positive value. Positive value is equal to the total voltage across the equivalent one. Um, and then the sign depends on you know whether which way you're going across. If you're actually keeping track of the delta Vs for a loop rule. Um, for the parallel combination, uh, it's uh, the other one. We'll, we'll maybe talk about ammeters and voltmeters in, a, in another, another movie, another uh, video. Same with uh, real batteries. So parallel resistor, uh, for example, if these light bulbs could be treated as resistors, then as soon as we close that switch, B and C are connected in parallel. And it's only after you combine those two that you could say that the combination BC is in series with A. So BC are in parallel there. And for a parallel combination of resistors, uh, you have the, the funky formula, right? The one over R equivalent is one over R1 plus one over R2. So it should make, maybe look familiar from the equivalent capacitor, capacitance formula. But remember for capacitors, this was series combinations of capacitor was the complicated formula. Here it's parallel combinations of resistors. Um, for these two, again, assuming this is a, a closed switch right here, then the voltage across B is equal to the voltage across C, and it's equal to the voltage across the equivalent resistor as well. So for a parallel combination, V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V equivalent, but the currents will split. So if you have some total current, it's going to split into this amount and this amount. So maybe I1 plus I2 is I equivalent, I EQ. I equivalent is I1 plus I2. Whereas for the series combination of resistors, it was I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I equivalent. OK, uh, that's the gist of that. So we'll talk about some of these other things in, in another video. But um, let's get to the, the example problem. OK, so uh, this problem has us look at uh, this circuit. And we want to solve for the current going through the 3 ohm resistor. Um, so I want to point out that if this battery weren't here, if this battery were just replaced with a single wire right there, um, the way that we would most easily go about solving this problem is that we would combine the, the 4 ohm and the 3 ohm resistor that are in parallel. We would combine them to find the equivalent resistance of that. And then maybe take that combination. So it looks like it would be 12 divided by 7 ohms. We would take that combination and combine it with the 5 ohm resistor in series to just get one equivalent resistor across the 12 volt battery. So if that's the case, we could solve for the total current in the circuit, the total current that's going through the battery. And I say total because it actually splits right here. You know, at that junction, it splits. But the, the total amount is the amount, that, the amount that's going through that one battery. So we would find the, the uh, current first, uh, and then maybe keep track of voltage changes. So then the voltage across this one plus the voltage across this would give you 12 volts in magnitude. Uh, and then you would, so you'd use that info to, to solve for uh, the currents here. That's probably the easiest way to go about doing that one. Uh, the problem that we have, though, is a little bit more complicated than that because we have a battery right there. And that, that, that 3 volt battery is messing up the four and the three ohm resistors from being in parallel. They're not in parallel because that battery is messing it up. So in general, if you have more than one battery and they're not connected along the same branch, you kind of have to use Kirchhoff's rules. You have to use more than one loop for a Kirchhoff loop rule. Um, so for the two loops, uh, so, so first of all, we don't know the current through any of these branches. We do know that there's some total amount that's going to split. So let's just uh, let's say that we have I, I1 through here and I2 through there. So we actually don't, I'm just kind of guessing that this 12 volt battery is controlling the total direction of the current in the circuit. So I'm guessing that this is going to be the total amount of current and it's uh, some total value. So I'm going to call it, for now, I'm going to call it I3, but I'm going to replace that in just a second. So I'm going to assume that that current splits into I1 and I2. And that looks a little funny right here because that looks like I2 is going in a direction opposite from what the three volt battery wants it to do. So maybe when we solve all this, we'll get a negative value for I2. 
who knows? So, and that would be okay with me. That just means we chose the wrong direction there. That's fine. Um, so a Kirchhoff junction, so right now there's three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. Kirchhoff's junction rule is probably, is the easier one to implement. And that's probably the one you wanna do first, just because it will take our three unknowns and simplify it down to two unknowns. So if we look at this junction right here, looks like the current flowing into that junction equals the current flowing out. Or in other words, I3 has to equal I1 plus I2. So I'm just gonna replace I3 with I1 plus I2 to take care of that. Now we just have two unknowns, I1 and I2. And so we've already used Kirchhoff's junction rule. So now we need Kirchhoff's loop rule. And actually we're gonna apply it to two loops in the circuit. They're actually two independent loops going on. We can get two equations out of it. So for loop one, I'm going to look at the, uh, I'm gonna look here. This is gonna be my first loop. So this will be loop one. And then for the second loop, uh, we'll do this one right here. We'll just go around just this tiny loop in there. Um, so actually there are, there are a few different, there are three different combinations. There are three possibilities for the two sets of loops that you could do. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the outer perimeter and then the, uh, the small loop. So you just need two separate loops. See? And if you do all three of them, you're actually gonna get a redundancy in your equations. Um, you, you'll just get, you'll get a set of three equations, but only two of them are independent. Uh, okay, so let's see, loop one. Let's see what info that tells us, loop one. And let's start and end right there. And let's go around um, in the clockwise direction. And the reason I'm doing that is just because the 12, the battery is the easiest thing to do. Like the battery is gonna give us a positive voltage. Uh, so that gives us 12 volts right away when we jump across that battery. When we jump across the five ohm resistor, and actually I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, we're going to use SI units here. So to keep, I, I want to, I, I just want to introduce variables here in the equation. I don't want to try and keep track of units and variables at the same time. So just SI units 12. And it looks like we're doing a voltage drop across the five ohm resistor. So jumping from here to here uh, across the five ohm resistor, uh, we're going to lose voltage because we're going in the direction of, of the current I1 plus I2. So we're gonna lose uh, V equals IR across the resistor. So I times R is gonna be uh, I1 plus I2, that's the I, and then times the R is the five ohms. And I'm only writing down variables there. I'm not writing down the ohms or the volts because you know that will clutter up the, the equation a little bit. There's only one other circuit element that we need to jump across and that is the three ohm resistor. And that looks like that's a voltage drop of uh, minus, so IR, I1 times the resistance of three ohms. And then we're back to where we started from. So the, the sum of all the voltage drop, drops, uh, gains or drops is zero. Right? We gain it across the battery and then assuming we chose the right directions for the currents, looks like it's a voltage drop across the other two, those two resistors. So that's loop one. Uh, loop two will give us a different equation. And again, let's start uh, the bottom left corner. So it looks like we're gaining across the battery. So three volts across the battery. and Going across the four ohm resistor, we're actually going opposite the direction of the current. So that's a voltage gain of four times I2. Uh, and then we're going the same direction. We're going down across the three ohm resistor. So that's a voltage drop minus three times I1 uh, is equal to zero. So it looks like, uh, so we have two equations for our two unknowns, I1 and I2. Uh, and so you can solve this, probably the easiest way is by elimination. Um, so it looks like uh, you can take one, of, so it looks like we have a five, a five I2 right here and a four I2 right here, maybe multiply the second equation by five fourths, solve for five I2 and then plug it into, into the loop one equation. Um, so I'll write in the description what the solution is for I1 and I2 for this, for this. but this is the hard part is setting up the system of two equations for two unknowns, and then we can solve for I1 and I2. And it looks like the final answer is, well, if I1 is positive, then it's that value going down through three, the three ohm resistor. And if we solve this equation and we get a negative value for I1, then the current is actually going up through the three ohm resistor of whatever uh, absolute value that minus is. All right, uh, we'll get more practice with this in class. <laughs>